morning guys, bright and early, <sighs> half past one this morning I had to get up, I don't mind though, finally up a mountain, finally, but, and it's a big but, I sense this morning's going to be a bit of a, a frustrating one, the views up here are absolutely fantastic, uh, can't complain about that at all, so you'll see from that drone footage the Lake District lovers among you out there will know this viewpoint quite well, the place I've come to this morning is the rather spectacular viewpoint of Crinkle Crags. Crinkle Crags sort of straddles the Langdale and Estdale valleys. So you come up to this viewpoint, you almost get a bit of a two for one if you like. So if the, you know, the light isn't working in one direction, you've always got half a chance of shooting towards the Scorfells in the other direction across Estdale. I've come to this spot a couple of... Well, I actually came to this place three times in a week last year. Uh, determined to get a decent shot in the sort of wintry conditions but each time I was I was scuppered by you know bad light or fog or you know it was always something so I held off coming back up here for a while until I started doing these vlogs but I thought you know my first sort of proper mountain walk on uh, on this channel should be up to a, a good one so yeah we're at Crinkle Crags this morning I think it could be a bit of a frustrating one the forecast was actually for clear skies which i was perfectly happy with to be honest i'm not you know a massive believer that you know clouds and skies make shots there really should be the sort of cherry on the icing on the cake if you like so i really just wanted some direct light hitting the you know the rock faces in the foreground and then some of the other mountain uh peaks in the distance but <laughs> again you know weather forecasting it's absolutely on its ass at the moment I can't seem to get a decent, reliable forecast anywhere these days. I've come up here and I would say it's probably 60-70% low cloud and the forecast, even at half past one when I set off, was saying, uh, you know, 10% high cloud and that was it. So it's, it's absolutely miles off, but I'm going to stick it out anyway and see how it goes and hopefully, you know, the light gets through before it gets a bit harsh. I'll... Uh, I'll go and have a look and see if I can get something sorted. Not happening, not happening. Hour and a quarter after sunrise we are now and yeah, I think we can kiss goodbye to any sort of great shot here. The light isn't going to get through. This cloud just isn't shifting at all. Anyway, the shot itself. When I first got here, I walked over uh, two or three of the crinkles and ended up coming back to the first one where I spotted this rock sticking out like a sore thumb, really. It's stuck out a mile from all the other rocks. Um, almost... A bit like a column sort of jutting out so i thought i'd build a, a shot around that in terms of the composition it's a little bit of a tricky one to figure out this because you know when you're shooting off the end of cliffs it's very easy to lose the sort of connection between foreground and midground you know when you're shooting downhill i saw joel cornish talking about this on a, a recent vlog that on landscape put out so i'm I'm technically copying the master here but anyway the point stands in that when you're shooting downhill off the end of a cliff especially when you're so high up here i mean we're about sort of 900 meters up here so it's you know it's a fair old height but when you're shooting downhill it's very easy to lose that connection between the big ground and the foreground because you know with our eyes we can see everything you know scale and perspective no problem but when you're trying to convert that into a 2d image that effect can get lost a little bit especially when the sort of gradient in front of you is, you know, falling away really sharply. So with this sort of column shaped rock that we've got in the foreground, I think that does a really good job there of connecting the foreground and the midground together. You know, you don't feel like it's just sort of falling away. We, we did have a slight issue in the bottom right corner, moving up to the right hand third there in that, you know, there is a little bit of a sort of empty space, but the, the line of the river in the in the valley bottom there is doing a good job of filling that so you know we haven't got your eyes sort of just falling out of the shot if you like so i think that 
part of it balances up pretty well. Hopefully when I come back next time, we'll get better conditions and the shot will work. But for now, it'll just have to be a bit of a recce. I did get one just after sunrise of this where the sun broke through and we got a little bit of nice light, but you know, it was nothing, nothing special to be honest. Um, I'll put up a couple, uh, one, you know, much after sunrise when the light's a bit harsh and you know, let me know what you think anyway. You know what pleasantly i think i might have been wrong there the light did get out and it wasn't quite as harsh as i was expecting it to be so fingers crossed that wider shot there with the nice sort of column in the foreground will work reasonably well i mean it's not exactly what i was going for but do you know what it's better than nothing uh, i've come round, well just along the ridge a little further part of the reason that i stopped at this first crinkle is that one of the reasons you'll find if you come up here is that the further along the ridge you walk, the less you get of this really sort of spectacular view of these sort of crags dropping away. I'll just show you on the camera now. Now, as I say, the further round you go, you lose them. So when I came back, I had in mind a longer lens shot, either with the telephoto or maybe even the 50 mil, uh, you know, perfect world and I got that nice sort of orange glow first thing in the morning that hasn't happened but I've took a couple of quick shots there with the sort of dappled light that's been hitting the side of that cliff face I think it's called I think the sort of scree run down the middle of it's called Mickle Door not to be confused with the other Mickle Door on uh, Scorfell Pike two separate words uh don't know if this will work I mean you know as I say when conditions are better, I'll probably come and shoot it again, but at least I've got a good idea what the composition is going to look like for future. Okay, I think I'm going to leave this one here. I think I've probably had the best of the conditions now. I mean, I had a small window there for about 20 minutes where the light, you know, it wasn't ideal, but it was usable. And, you know, I think we'll come away with a, a few decent images there. I mean, in my head, I'm more thinking, you know, these are sort of recce shots for future occasions, I think. I mean, this is a place that you've got to keep coming to over and over again because... I mean, I've only been shooting down the, the Langdale side of the valley this morning. You've got, you know, shots out to the Irish Sea down Eskdale. You've got other shots in 180 degrees the other direction towards the Score Fells. You've even got shots looking out towards Windermere and back across sort of cold pikes. So, or, you know, you can spend a lifetime up here finding new shots, really. So it's a, it's a cracking place. And, you know, as I say, one I'll keep coming to. I think the next time I come up here, though, it'll probably be in the winter when, you know, there's a bit of snow on the tops and maybe a bit more interest. And, of course, the uh, sunrises will be a little a bit more agreeable. I had to get up at half past one again this morning to, to get out here. I mean, absolutely crazy. <laughs> I'll be glad to see the back of them. Can't wait for autumn. <laughs> But you shouldn't wish your life away because, you know, I really enjoy coming up the fells in summer. I mean, the, you know, the long nights mean that you've got a little, you know, bit of leeway after work to get up the fells and do some photography as well. So, you know, summer photography shouldn't be completely ruled out. But if I've got any more images on top of the ones that I showed there, I'll uh, post them up. I think there was, well, I did shoot a couple long before I started filming when the sun was coming up. I'm not massively convinced they're going to be any good, but if they are, I'll post them up. But as I say, anyway, keep liking, subscribing, you know what to do. Sorry this vlog has been a few days delayed, life gets in the way, running a gallery, etc, etc. I won't bore you with all that, but yeah, my plan is to keep these, you know, running weekly and I'll, you know, do my best to do that. But uh, for now, I'll, I'll let you go and I'll see you in the next one.